Hi there, this uh, video is going to look at uh, labour or uh, productivity. Um, we're now uh, working through this section of the AQA AS uh, and, and A level specification, um, looking at uh, the interpretation of operations data. And we're just going to look at this first bullet point here of these different methods of analysing operational performance that you need to be aware of. So, um, Labour productivity. It's a measure of operational performance that assesses the average output of each worker and the formula is one that you will need to memorise and learn off by heart. Um, but it's quite a simple one. We simply take the total output of an organisation and we divide it by the number of workers it has taken to produce that output. So, for a very simple example, if I were running a coffee shop and it had uh, 10 workers, and those 10 workers produced 1,000 cups of coffee uh, in the course of a day. Uh, the output per uh, worker for that day would have been 100 cups of coffee. Okay, um, 1,000 divided by 10 equals 100. So each worker, on average, produces 100 cups of coffee, and that is the labour productivity. So, um, uh, labour productivity, it rises, if we look at the formula we can see, uh, the labor, rising labour productivity, which is often a target for a firm, how can we get our workers to work harder and produce more, um, it rises when we can increase output with the same number of workers, so if I can make um, my 10 workers the following day produce 1,500 cups of coffee, their labour productivity, uh, the output 1,500 divided by 10 is going to equal 150. Each worker has worked a lot harder uh, on that day and uh, produced an extra 50% for me. So um, that would be good and I'd be happy with that. Um, or if we can get the same output uh, with fewer workers, then that would be a great result as well. So if I can uh, sell a thousand cups of coffee, but um, I can do that with only five workers working, uh, this time a thousand divided by five, each worker is responsible for 200 cups of coffee. And so the labour productivity has also risen then, even though output hasn't increased. I've just got rid of some workers and my remaining ones are working a lot harder. I'm just going to skip to the bottom. Well, why is that important? Um, well, assuming that I haven't give the, given those staff a wage rise, I haven't increased the wages of the remaining staff, then if I can increase labour productivity, the labour cost per unit is going to fall. In other words, um, that unit um, becomes cheaper in terms of the labour to produce, and if I keep the selling price the same, I can make a higher profit on each unit I sell. So, labour productivity, a very important target for businesses. Um, and we've got some different methods that businesses may use to increase labour productivity. So there are some soft uh, human resource measures, um, and I, I we'll talk about them more in the people unit. Um, but soft human resource methods to increase productivity uh, may include training staff, giving them more skills, uh, making them better prepared to be able to produce the output. Um, Organising workers into uh, teams so that they can support each other, uh, train each other, uh, stronger workers support less strong workers, or using uh, other uh, motivational methods, um, all of which could be considered soft methods to increase uh, productivity. Hard methods to increase productivity might be the use of piece rate payment, where we pay workers for each unit they produce and therefore they're incentivised to produce more. We might use deadlines. Uh, quotas, uh, targets, and there's punishment for which if, if they're not met I might try and increase my labour productivity that way. Or uh, we could just uh, replace some of our workers with capital, get rid of some of the workers, bring in machines, um, and that should uh, mean that the remaining workers are far more productive because they're using machinery to produce the goods. So, how might an exam question look at this? Well, this is taken from the June 2012 paper on the old spec. Um, calculate the forecast annual labour productivity for the company's muscle farm. Uh, endorse it in 2014.
routine. So I'll talk a lot more about exam technique. Sorry, it's not the slide. Uh, I've got the exam paper here. I'll talk a lot more about exam technique in other videos, but before you uh, go into the exam, it's a very good idea to read the questions. So I know that I'm looking to calculate the labour productivity uh, for 2014. So I know I need to find out the 2014 output and the 2014 number of workers. So as I'm reading the case study, I would simply put labour productivity 2014. And as I'm reading through, I would look out for the information that I need. And I can see there, I can see here, it plans to produce uh, 4,320 4, tonnes of mussels in 2014. Um, and now I need to find the number of workers. Well, it employs 40 workers. Um, however, employee numbers will increase by 50%. So it employs 40 workers. Add 50% to that, so I'm going to have 60 workers in 2014 producing that many tons of mussels, and then I can go ahead and um, answer the question. Okay, so uh, I don't have a calculator, and I'm not going to do that now. You can work that out if you want, but um, I just want to draw your attention to this. Now, this is taken from the new, this is from the new specification. Uh, it's a different question, it's about fixed costs, but I've highlighted this bit because it makes it clear the, the um, you can achieve two marks out of the five for writing down the formula. Okay, You can achieve two marks out of five for writing down a relevant formula. Okay, I had a look at the 2016 mark scheme and there was a four mark calculation question for which they offered one mark um, for writing down the formula. So it's really important if you ever get a question on labour productivity to write the formula. Um, that means that you'll secure a minimum of one mark on that question. So um, that's labour productivity. Uh, next time we'll look at unit costs.